Well, how do you do, buckaroos? This is Joe Layden of Cowboys and Indians Magazine, and it is my great pleasure today to be talking with Henry Paul, a founding member of not only the Outlaws, but Blackhawk, uh, both very uh, well-remembered and still popular groups on tour and on recording. And today we're going to be talking about, um, well, a kind of new, kind of bold, uh, kind of incredible album, Blue Highway, uh, showcasing uh, three uh, original members of Blackhawk. Uh, and uh, well, Henry, I'll let you tell us about it. Well, <clears throat> prior to our recording of the first album, we wrote probably for 10, 8, 10, 12, uh, a year maybe, not quite a year, but we wrote every day, we compiled a body of work that we submitted to the label for consideration to record on our first album. And, and it was kind of like a little folky, you know, just wasn't very pointed. It was, they were really good songs, but they got passed on by the label. The, the, the head of the label, mm -hmm. Tim Dubois, wanted us to connect at radio because in country music, if you don't connect at radio, you really don't have a career. Right. right. Even back in the 90s when this happened. That's right. And I mean, it's not like rock radio where you can not have a top 40 hit and still have a successful career on album-oriented rock. It doesn't work that way in country. So <clears throat> we wound up with this collection of songs that we had in our bag for decades. A van passed away in 2001. And so I said to Dave, I said, well, we have all these really cool songs. No one's ever heard them. It's you and I and Van singing. Van's gone. We could bring him back and put the original band together. And these were voice guitar demos, like something that we cut in a, you know, in the basement of EMI studio in Nashville on one take. I mean, but we, we knew these songs. So we, I talked to Dave about it and I said, let's you and I renovate these songs, put bass and drums on them add electric guitar, mandolin, and make a Blackhawk record out of it, featuring you and I and Van. I mean, Van's not coming back, so this was pretty much the best we could do to bring him back. And as I said earlier, the songs were sort of, they weren't pointed at, I don't think, a country music playlist. They were a little bit eclectic. There's a lot of adjectives I could dredge up, you know, hippy dippy, kind of ethereal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they were all really good songs. And it's funny how it works when sometimes when you put your commercial foot forward, and let me just say that Goodbye Says It All, Sure Can Smell the Rain, that's just about right, you know, every once in a while. These were great songs too. But these were songs that no one had ever heard. And when you, when you go back and you <clears throat> pull them out and you put a band behind it and, you, and they sort of sit side by side with Blackhawk records of documented, you know, character they really do quite well and it's sort of a nice release to step away from the radio format and uh and let's face it we're a ways up the road since we were a everyday item on country music radio so we can kind of do whatever we want and and we we just loved these songs dave and i loved them and we fixed them up and I'll be damned if Dave and I and Van aren't together again on this new record. So that was the idea behind it. And uh, my wife, 
is a music fan. Like, you know how people can be music fans and then people that don't really engage that. <laughs> he grew up in a house, a musical household. And she loves this record. She said, Henry, this record on its own could break out and do something really significant for you and Dave. Mm -hmm. It's not like it used to be. I I'm an old dude, you know, like, I mean, I've 50 years of playing and singing and I'm like, nah, whatever, I, you know, nah. But she said, no, you, you don't know. This could catch on somehow. And so we're putting it out there. We're gonna probably work up a song or two off the record and put it in our show. And we're gonna include it in our musical legacy and discography and, and let it be a part of our personality landscape wise. Well, um, forgive me for using a high flute word here, but uh, what struck me about uh, the album, and they still call them albums, I suppose, uh, was the dichotomy of some of the cuts. For example, the, the title cut, you know, Blue Highway, it sounds like it could be from the 90s, but it also sounds like something that could be released yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the tight harmonies, uh, the music, and I, and I, again, I don't know if it's the combination of the harmonies and the new music, but uh, I think you've got a winner there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Baby the Rain Must Fall, which I understand is, you know, your first uh, single release from it. But uh, it, it, it's, it's an unusual experience, but an unusually pleasant experience listening mm -hmm. to the album, mm -hmm. particularly if you are a music fan and particularly if you are a longtime Blackhawk fan. Right. Well, you know, it strikes a variety of chords stylistically. Black Hawk was always one of those country groups that people loved that didn't care much for country music. Mm -hmm. So we were sort of a conduit to the genre. Uh, the pop sensible arrangements, lyrics and instrumentation, the, the revival of the mandolin used in a pop music setting, mm -hmm. just the different character of our musical personality let me say this that when black hawk was having hits at radio we were not an easy sell it was a hard sell and when you say well black hawk has x amount of top 10 singles well and a multi-platinum album let's not multi-platinum albums but what, what i guess my point is alan jackson's over there being himself and he's quite a talented man i mean i'm an admirer but he writes about here in the real world and Chattahoochee and a pyramid of cans. I, I, and Alan might not be the best example, but there are country lifestyle issues that we never engaged because it wasn't who we were. And even though we were penalized in the moment at radio, in the long run, our career has a credibility that maybe some of our contemporaries that took the kind of shortcut to the top of the charts can't really, they don't have that. So you know, it's kind of like Garth Brooks, uh, and I would, I would, I venture to say that the dance was probably the record that put him into the solar, you know, out of this world. Uh, there was another song that he, you know, "Friends in Low Places," was huge, you know, and it, that was kind of a, you know, a thumbing of the nose at society, so to speak, and. I'm trying to think of the other, uh, he had this a song and I forget the title of her. Maybe you remember it was kind of like, you and I didn't have a relationship and it was a good thing that we didn't have. 
So I mean, he was he had some really interesting records to me. I, I uh, and I I think that you know, Restless Heart had a really interesting collection of songs. Um, the O'Kanes were really, mm -hmm. to me, really appealing. But I never was much about, you know, the hat and the country music swagger and lifestyle. So Blackhawk, while we got penalized early in the game, I think in the long run, it has been a very uh, fortuitous sort of characteristic of our musical personality. You bring up a really good point because uh, we're pretty close to the first uh, CMA Fest in a couple of years. Uh, you know, we didn't have any because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's been my experience going to, you know, the CMA Fest and other, you know, country music events that country music fans are the most loyal fans in all of music. In, in, in any kind of music. I mean, yes, there are oldies rock and roll shows and things like that, but, uh, you know, there are, you know, to use the term legacy acts that still draw crowds, uh, that still have lines of people uh, showing up to get autographs and get pictures taken. And these are solo acts, these are, you know, groups sometimes performing, sometimes just showing up to meet and greet. Uh, that haven't had anything on the charts in 30 years. Right. But it doesn't matter because, you know, uh, not only do the fans still enjoy their music, but the groups are still touring. Right. You know, and there's, I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but both Blackhawk and the Outlaws mm. still appear in concert. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? They, they, they do. And they... <clears throat> and they perform at a high level. If you put something out there in, in the way of a performance, which is really what pretty much all we have left, and you have a really tightly paced show and a really high quality group of musicians and you're faithful to the musical personnel, you don't wander off and get excessive and do a lot of yapping and you just come out and you play for 90 minutes and it's seamless. It, it the energy level builds to a crescendo and i mean our audience for some reason is sort of like my children's age they're all like 18 to 30 and i'm flattering myself there but no 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 i'm uh, that it, that is you know another phenomenon that you know it's not all just uh, old oldies like myself, you know, showing up for these concerts. I mean, there are people there mm -hmm. with their kids and their kids' kids. They grew up with it going on in the house and they love it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 90s country is enjoying a surge. Mm -hmm. I understand, and I don't listen to country radio any longer, but I understand that there's a resurgence in the musical personality itself emerging on the playlist. That a lot of the labels manipulation of musical genres to try and attract a young crowd that is more predisposed to buy records. I mean, mm -hmm. buying records is what this is, is about. And music is a conduit to a social setting. So young people are much more engaged in music as a fan. Old people like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't even, you know, mm -hmm. they're over with, they're done. Young kids, they're trying to connect. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to have relationships, you know, they're feeling rejection, they're feeling euphoric. It's exciting. Whereas once you've kind of done it, it's like old hat. Mm -hmm. I never did that. I'm staying home. I don't need the crowds. I don't want to, you know, forget it. I don't want to try and put on some real clothes. I'm wearing my sweats, you know, it's like, okay. So, so I, you know, our, our, our audience is youthful for whatever reason. And, 
and our audience is also equally divided between male and female. It's not one of those lopsided female audiences, you know, where the singer sings about true love. <laughs> and I, I'm not trying to be cynical, but I'm saying we talk about my old friend lives up in the mountain. He flew up there to paint the world. It's different than your love amazes me. It's different. Do you ever have like an identity crisis on stage though, where you're right in the middle of uh, say a performance with outlaws and say, oh, wait a minute, that's a Blackhawk song. I, I, bet, I better quit it right now. Uh, the audiences are, are so diametrically opposite. There's no way you'd be confused. There is no personality <laughs> melding. Now, some of the Blackhawk fans have discovered the Outlaws. The Outlaws is a musical group based on instrumental virtuosity. Blackhawk is a musical group based on spiritual and emotionally charged messages. They're completely different experiences. And one's an ass whipping and the other is like therapy. The outlaws, I'm telling you, an hour and 45 minutes of that beating, <laughs> you crawl back onto the bus in the bag, <clears throat> just completely spent physically. Mm -hmm. and it, but it's fun. And, and if you don't play that band with all of you have, if you play the outlaw thing at cruise control, it, you, you have no career and you can't play that music like that. You can't play Greengrass and High Tide with a ho-hum. Mm -hmm. It's got to be all in or nothing. So the Outlaws is an ass whip and Black Hawk is work, but it sure can smell the rain. That's... Well, I have to ask this question, given, you know, the fact of, you know, we're dealing in a, with in an age where it seems like every other big movie is a comic book inspired movie. Uh, did anyone from DC Comics ever approach you and say, now, you know, we had this Blackhawk comic strip for several years. In fact, I believe there was a Blackhawk movie serial back in the days. And, you know, we'd like you to change your name or, 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 or something. Well, I think what I know about trademark law, it has to, it has to, uh, encroach on someone else's territory from the standpoint of its use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a comic book strip and a country music group are absolutely at opposite ends of the universe. So mm -hmm. you just can't have a name called Blackhawk and walk around and start putting people out of business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when we decided that's who we wanted to be, there was a band in Ohio called Blackhawk and there was a band in Colorado called Blackhawk. They didn't, I think that either they saw it as an opportunity, but it was not an inexpensive settlement with both these musical entities. Mm -hmm. They were musical entities. And so the checks were written and it was charged to me and Dave and Van as a recoupable advance. But we, that's who we wanted to be. And I think- Well, is that why, why you have the capital H in the name of, you know, uh, well, just differentiate said, yourself. Yeah, just because I didn't want it to go by as just one word. I mean, I thought it was sort of like capitalizing the T in the Beatles, you know, beat. <laughs> it, was, it was just uh, an embellishment of the two words that were written out as one. And I, I can't, it's just some harebrained thing that I did that I like, <laughs> I can't explain it. Well, finally, um, how much, how many days of touring do you still do a year? And do you try to, you know, even it out between Outlaws and Blackhawk or is one, does one get more dates than the other? No, no, they're pretty equally divided and let me just say that having two, I, I, I could tour all year on the Outlaws. I could tour all year on Blackhawk, but having them both 
is such a, and having a band that can play both, it, it relieves the pressure of forcing the brand out there over and over and over and over year after year after year after year. It just, it takes the pressure off of the outlaws and Blackhawk. We, we don't have to go do this. We don't have to do that. We have two bands. If I want to do a hundred dates a year, I want to do a hundred dates. That's all I want to do. I want to do a hundred dates. Generally there's 40 or 50 of one and 40 and 50 of the other or 60, 40, but it's Blackhawk is enjoying an enormous surge of popularity and it shows in a financial way. The outlaws are solid. They do the rock legends cruise. They, Hard ticket band really does well. Blackhawk in the upper Midwest and West men in the summer is like one of the most fun ways to spend the summer on a bus in Montana. And 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 do you still try to squeeze in a few performances with the, the Henry Paul group? I did. I did. I decided I made a conscientious decision to never do that again. It just became too difficult. Uh, but we were doing Henry Paul band dates as recently as last year. And the Henry Paul band still enjoys a great deal of popularity. That first album, Grey Ghost, has held up so well over time. It's become a bit of a cult classic in the genre of Southern rock. And while we didn't have the numbers that the outlaws had or any of the other, mm -hmm. we still had a great deal of respect and a great deal of uh, credibility. And uh, we had a great band and great records, some better than others, but there were a couple really good ones in there, probably two or three. And then you know, everybody in the original band is still alive. No one died. That's yeah. right. So, so you never say never. Never say never, but man, oh man, the complications and the hair pulling and <laughs> you have no idea how, you know, if you don't do this every day, like if you walk away from it and you come back 10 years later, it's not a pretty picture. You have to do this. It's kind of like working out or, you know what I mean? Weed in the mm -hmm. garden. If you leave the garden for a while and you come back, it's a mess. Yes. Well, Henry, you've been very generous with your time. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the new old album. New old album. And I wish you great success with it because you deserve it. Well, thanks, Joe. And thanks for the, you know, the, high quality of journalism in an interview. I appreciate that. Oh, gee. well, flattering will get you everywhere. There you go. <laughs> and I love the publication. It's great. Thank you very much. Okay. See ya. Uh, stay well and be safe. Okay, and you be a good boy. Well, uh, I will be good. And if I can't be good, I won't get caught. Yes. And if I get caught, I won't call you up for bail money. Keep it on the down low. There you go. There you go. Bye for now.